There's a place where the old warbirds still gleam in the sun, but they have a new mission now to educate, as we discovered at the Air Classics Museum in Aurora. Our whole theme is preserving the dream. We want to indoctrinate people, young and old, get them to remember our history, remember what people have done in the past with this equipment for the defense of the United States. We have an F-86. Uh, our our F-86 was one of 10 that were built. This one actually flew during the Korean War and it was unarmed and it would make reconnaissance dashes up into North Korea, photographing the various facilities there and coming back. It was then sent to the Navy where it was used as a radio-controlled aircraft, which they used to destroy. That's the uh, F-105, uh, commonly referred to as the THUD. Uh, that particular aircraft, uh, the F-105, was uh, unusual in that it had an internal bomb bay. Initially, it was designed to carry a nuclear weapon. Um, that mission went away pretty early in its uh, existence, so it became uh, uh, basically a fighter bomber uh, using wing racks uh, for the armament. Uh, those airplanes were used very extensively in Vietnam. Many were lost in Vietnam. We have an, uh, our A-7 here actually flew 24 missions in Desert Storm. We have the letter, photographs, memorabilia from the commander that flew the airplane. Uh, it is primarily a bomber, and we have restored it, repainted it once to the original colors that it used during this Desert Storm. The T-6 was initially developed prior to World War II there were several derivatives of it, an NA-64. Uh, these planes didn't survive, but the T-6 was our primary trainer for all of our military services. I should say it's an advanced trainer, an AT-6. It was used by many, many foreign governments throughout Europe, throughout Central and South America. It's probably one of the biggest favorites of the Warbird collectors today. Uh, that particular aircraft was uh, based down in Pensacola for most of its life as a trainer. It was purchased by one of our museum members about 10 years ago, and uh, it's been fully restored. It also flies on a weekly basis. The pride and joy of the museum actually is that P-51 Mustang. That's one of the most original P-51s in existence right now. It still has all the guns, all the armament, uh, the gun camera works. All the bomb release mechanisms work. It's fully operational. It flies uh, every week. Uh, that particular aircraft uh, was very uh, late, uh, a very late production model uh, during World War II. It was built in 1945. It was sent uh, to New Jersey and actually put on a ship and sent over to Italy. But as far as we know, it never saw action over there. After the war, it came back and it was uh, decommissioned from the uh, inventory and sent down to Honduras, where it spent many years uh, with the Honduras, Hond Honduran Air Force. The Huey was the mainstay for the Army during Vietnam. It did uh, yeoman service from bringing people in, out, food, medicine. Uh, that plane just had an outstanding reputation for performance. We do intend to take our Hueys and uh, we have tentative plans if and when we get the members and the donations to make a Huey Memorial because it, it just has such a history, such a relationship with so many Americans who went to Vietnam. The airport authority has now given us 10 acres on the west side. We hope to relocate all of our airplanes onto the west end in an open area where they can be viewed by everyone. Our whole theme is preserving the dream. Currently, Aviation Classics is the only air museum in the Chicago area. In fact, one of its aircraft is now on display in Terminal 2 at O'Hare Airport. 
It's an F-44F Wildcat, the same kind of fighter plane flown by Butch O'Hare. And to find out more about the Air Classics Museum, call 630-466-0888 or go to their website at www.airclassicsmuseum.org.